Hey traders, happy Monday. Welcome to the weekly outlook. This is Chris Ball over here. It is the week of August 10th through the 14th. Uh, we're going to talk about all things stocks, forex, cryptos. I just finished up a morning session, so all the ideas and trade setups are fresh in my mind. So this video should be pretty quick. If you have to watch it a couple of times, feel free to do so. Uh, look, we got a ton of noise. Uh, we finished positive for the week in all U.S. markets last week. Dow Jones, S&P, NASDAQ, uh, all oh, what, two and a half percent. So S&P was 2.45%, NASDAQ 2.5%, Dow Jones 3.8%. So markets can't be stopped. We added jobs last week in the U.S. with non-farm payroll. Yet at the end of the day, the dollar started to get stronger going into risk-off trading a little bit this morning, which I'll show as we see some division in Capitol Hill. Uh, in the U.S. So here's what's happening. Back in April, you know, we had coronavirus concerns for a couple of weeks and then kitchen sinks were thrown in, stimulus packages rolled out uh, as, tar as far as the, the, the jobs report. All right. So April 2020, lockdowns hit, U.S. economy loses over 20 million jobs, unemployment hits 14.7%, which is the highest since World War II. May, we add 2.5 million jobs, unemployment rate goes down. Okay, June, we add another 4.8 million jobs. Lockdowns ease, businesses reopen, unemployment falls to 11%. Okay, but COVID cases have been rampant since then. Ju uh, June and July, cases are nonstop. And now we're at the threshold, I keep talking about this, schools are starting. In the next couple of weeks, kids are going back to school. The next couple of weeks, colleges are starting classes. Are they going to be online? Are they going to be in person? There are schools in Mississippi. There are schools in Georgia. There are schools all over the country right now that kids are going back and testing positive for coronavirus. That is that's awful. Okay, let's keep going. July report, we added 1.8 million jobs. Now, remember, I just said in April, we lost over 20 million jobs. So the reality here is that even though we're showing that there are job numbers coming back every month, you have to realize we lost over 20 million. So all we're doing is getting those jobs back. And thus far, we have recovered less than half of those jobs that have been lost or unemployment claims that continue to pile up. So uh, you, you mount that with stimulus aid that has ended. So no longer is there the $600 unemployment benefit. Uh, Congress can't seem to agree on things. We have Trump that signed uh, several what? Uh, executive orders this week, one to enhance employment benefits for an extra $300 a week in federal boosts. Uh, I'm reading this right from the Robin Hood snacks. So uh, suspend payroll taxes for anyone earning 100K or less and defer federal student loan payments and temporarily forgive interest. And just like it says in that Robin Hood snack, everyone's confused and we can't afford to waste time. So we have, you know, Republicans on one side say that it's too generous. We have Democrats on one side saying it's not enough. Um, we have executive orders, which are loaded with federal spending, could get sued in court. So there's uncertainty, and yet one thing remains clear, the virus controls the economy, and it's still out of control. So school starting back up, the timing of this is, is pretty terrible. Um, it, again, it kind of seems like the perfect environment for some risk-off trading. Now, technically which is what I keep bringing us back to, like we have all these little minutes of commentary, but I bring us back to the technicals. This is going to be a nice short and sweet video on some great setups to watch, some great setups to trade. Uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to get into the charts here. Understand there's risk in trading. Please and always use trade capital only. Do not trade with money you cannot afford to lose. This is how you can follow me on social media. Uh, I post all these videos on my YouTube channel. Just look up my name, Chris Pulver. You'll see me in a suit. That's my channel. Subscribe to it. Like the videos. Leave comments. Uh, appreciate all the feedback. You can also check me out on the other social media platforms on Instagram at pulver.chris. I post this weekly outlook video on IGTV. Uh, for other videos like my Keep It Seriously Simple video series, that is on YouTube only. So that's an exclusive to my YouTube channel. Uh, I did post two videos last week, three videos actually, uh, and they included choosing the right broker that works for you, adding to winning positions, and risk on, risk off trading, and how it correlates between stocks and Forex. So three great videos that came from traders like you that asked, hey, Chris, can you do a video on this? Like to learn about it. So there it is. Okay, so follow me out there on social media. Again, like the video, appreciate the comments, and uh, let me know how this is helping. Again, feel free to share this. If you know traders or uh, you know investors out there that can benefit from free education, send these videos their way. Okay, so I'm going to get into the charts right now. Um, this is actually the summary that I had from a morning session. I just ran a uh, special session. We rotate this 
Uh, it's called the Edge Trading Room, and I was in the session this morning. So this is actually what I'm going to be talking about today in a very concentrated dose. So I am currently short on the Aussie CAD. I am currently short on the New Zealand CAD. I am currently short on the Aussie dollar and long on the Euro Swiss. Now, directionally, these are some of my favorite position trades that I'm looking to take some profits on, hopefully this week, hopefully next week. Uh, we'll talk about those charts really quickly. And then also some really key spots for some breakouts. Okay, so let's focus on those today. Um, before we do, I would like to go into the SPY and the NASDAQ. So I'm going to go to the SPY, which is the S&P 500 Exchange Traded Fund. Also the QQQ, which is the Exchange Traded Fund for the NASDAQ. Um, we are back within... In fact, I think we're at, according to this weekly close from last week, the S&P did close 2.45% higher last week at 33.51. Now, if we go into the weekly chart, we will see that 33.51 is right back up towards the February high. Okay, now, are the bulls in full control or is this the perfect bull trap for the markets to actually start dropping? If you ask me, if, if, if we're in a financial market of buying low and selling high, what better spot to sell from than new historical highs? Now, granted, that's also fighting the Fed. That's also fighting sentiment. That's also fighting you know a bit of the, the, the drift that we've seen since April. Um, but I think a little confirmation goes a long way. I'm still looking to see if we get the bears to line up. And here we are right at the high. Now, we are back to the February highs. By no means do I think that we are in a better position. Uh, what I'm looking for here is confirmation. Do we have confirmation on the right side of the trend line? Do we have a week like this week that sets up a very large indecision candle? Do we have a week like this week that sets up a dark cloud cover, a bearish engulfing candle? Anything that gets us on the right-hand side of this trend line, uh, we are over. We're not quite overbought on the weekly chart, but we are disagreeing with momentum. So I'm looking at two critical spots there with these indicators. We do have a really clean level of price going higher and momentum disagreeing. We are not quite overbought like we were back in February right here. This was overbought in addition to that disagreement, which was why we started to see the technical sell-off, which we were ready for. This is the same thing. If we stretch into overbought, I'm looking for that to set up for confirmation to come. Now, how much does it drop? We don't know. Uh, I think that right now, even if it came back into a pullback, we have really had just one massive wave to the upside. So even a corrective wave is fine. Even a take it all away wave is fine, but I'm prepared for that. Now, like I said, I'm not interested in calling the top. Uh, I know that traders that are out there looking to trade options on the SPY are probably just going to have to roll those options over because I don't know how long you'd have to sit on this. Um, so, you know, if, if you're if you're getting expirations in November, you take on a little bit of the election, hoping that like the election's a big catalyst to drop the market. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The market still has a tendency to produce these Santa Claus rallies. I think that October might be the really nasty month. I think that as, as we get out of August and September, uh, I would suspect that volatility is a little bit higher. So I will be watching the two-week volatility in the Forex market. I'll be watching the SPY and the QQQ to see do we have some bearish confirmation. So on that note, you know we're right here at highs. We have some nice disagreement on the weekly chart. We're not quite overbought yet on that weekly chart. However, uh, let's take a look at the daily chart. And you will see here that same thing. Now, we're not quite overbought, are we? Look at the relative strength on the bottom. Are we overbought? Not quite, but we're close, right? We have highs in price. I like this amount of disagreement. I, I think that from this area here, I mean, starting from this level and this level, we're making higher highs in price. We are disagreeing with momentum. So momentum is certainly not supporting this move to the upside. But are we overbought? This is when we had the overbought conditions back in February. We are not quite at those same levels once again. So can we drift a little bit higher? Sure, I guess. Don't fight the market. But when we get into overbought conditions, I am really looking and lining up bearish confirmation. And it will probably be a fast and aggressive move, right? With a slew of fundamental reasons for the markets to drop uh, quickly. So that's the SPY. The NASDAQ looks pretty similar. So we'll go to the QQQ and take a look at that. So last week in the trading room, uh, we just kind of did the staggering numbers of, you know, we had like a 40 plus percent correction in March. We had a 60 plus percent rally to the upside. Ridiculous. 
um, you can see the structure. Every time we get these little dips, the queues get bought. Okay. Now I would suspect that that's going to continue to happen until it doesn't. So if there is a you know dip and it gets bought, here here's what I plan. If you want to buy the dip and it takes out the high, take your profit. If you want to buy the dip and it takes out the high, take your profit. And that will continue to happen until it doesn't. And so I'm more of the belief that you know that's fine for scalping. That's that's fine for staying with this current environment. But once this starts to break, you know, if and when we see a daily candle or weekly candle closing outside of this channel, now we're talking about back to previous resistance levels from February, back into balancing levels for this rising wedge and this, you know, again, divergence and overbought conditions. If you look back into February, end of January into February, overbought, you can see that we're clearly above that 70 line on the relative strength. We're not quite there here, but we're testing, we're testing, we're testing. There's barely any movement, but if we keep drifting higher, it's going to stretch into that level slightly above 70. And that is, to me, the, the, the great technical alignment of looking to sell it high with some bearishness, confirming this, and then seeing where we can get in as high as possible. And with confirmation, get in as high as possible and ride this thing down for a very aggressive sell-off. You know, where would I be conservative at for profit taking? If we come back to this high right here, so we use a line, it would be that February high. That is, you know, a very easy spot to see a little correction. If we come back any lower than that, just let it fall. You know, getting our trades in here with confirmation, moving stops to break even or better, and then trailing. If it comes down to this level and doesn't bounce and it blows right through it, then we just want to be trailing it the entire time. So it's one of those trades where I'm getting ready for that type of alignment to start kicking in and letting the fundamental storm of terrible news and this, the sky is falling type stuff to happen all over again. Um, but like I said, without confirmation, there's no reason to short it. So I'm just patiently waiting. I see the alignments, but the markets can remain irrational. So how does that translate into the currency market? Well, my favorite trades for this week are kind of my favorites for the last several weeks, but they're starting to look better and better. Uh, this is the daily chart for the Aussie CAD. I am short on the Aussie CAD. This green box is my profit zone. What I'm looking for is price to get on the right-hand side of this trend line and drop into that green box. If we drift a little bit higher into this yellow box, that is a resistance point between 96 and 9,800. I'm still going to look to sell it. I'm going to look to add positions on the right side of that, that trend line break and take profit at the same spot. So this take profit does not change for me, all right? The only thing that I'm looking for is I might be protecting profits a smidge earlier if it goes a little bit higher. But I'm still looking for this to short and drop into that green box, taking some nice chunks of profit on the Aussie CAD. Uh, I think it's a great trade. I think we have you know pockets, we have Fibonacci levels, we have good structure. Again, confirmation is let's get on the right-hand side of that trend line. Aussie dollar. Here's the four hour chart and you can see the reluctance for this thing to break. It's still, you know, making lows, pushing up, making lows, pushing up, making lows, pushing up. So let's see what it does. If we end up breaking, so this is fine, just drift. Eventually this channel will break. When and if it does, we're looking at 68.75 or lower. Uh, ideally, I'm trying to take profit. So I have, I have levels at like 70.20, 72.20, um, nice and high. If we get a bearish break I'll be adding to that position and looking to take profit you know safely at 6875 there's a monthly target down there and also 6775 or the previous lows we have a daily pocket around 6700 so there are a lot of great levels to the downside just simple Fibonacci pullbacks uh, just a wave cycle from this just stretching higher overbought here's the daily chart you know go to the higher time frame take a look at these great technical alignments okay are we getting disagreement heck yeah we are stretching higher in price. We're getting disagreement here in momentum. We're right back up near the highs of overbought conditions. Is it confirmed yet? Not quite. So this is where the patience comes in. Make sure that we're getting on the right side of the trend line. Make sure we're confirming some bearishness on the right-hand side of the trend line. Uh, if we drift a little bit higher, this is a high around 73.50 to 74.80. That's fine. That's a 18127 extension point with no pullback, very little balance. And if we get there, I expect this to be forming some tops for us to then start dropping into a wave cycle. So I'm still going to stay short. I'm keeping the trade sizes really small. If you're interested in seeing, you know, how I'm going to plan this trade, watch my YouTube video on the adding to winning positions. Because right now I'm testing. Right now this is test, test. I'll test it again. I'll test it again. Then with better confirmation, I add more to it and I turn this into a nice profit trade.
So take a look at that video and see how we're going to stack this up. Okay, that's Aussie dollar. Uh, Euro Swiss. This is a great looking trade, and this is an easy one to watch if you're just paying attention to the daily chart. This is requiring you to watch a Forex chart for the Euro Swiss once a day. Check it at 5 p.m. and see, is it closing above 1.0830? If we have a daily candle closing above 108.30, then I want to remain long towards 110. If it stays in here, there's nothing to do. Okay, I'll wait. I'll buy it lower. I'll buy it lower. But once in, once we break above 108.30, I'm looking for profit target at 110 or 110.50. That is Euro Swiss. It's pretty clean. Let's get some confirmation. Uh, let's see here. New Zealand CAD. This one is a great looking trade. We have good harmonics on a weekly and daily chart. So I'll go to that chart really quickly. Here's the weekly. Weekly harmonic. Looking to come back into this profit zone between 85.75 and 83.75. So it's a few hundred pips worth of breathing room. Uh, I have sold this one nice and high that if we get into the first stage of this profit zone, I'm going to be taking some profit. So there's a daily harmonic and a weekly harmonic. This is the overlap between their targets. And that's why I'm looking at this particular green zone to take some profit. Okay, so it's going our way. We've got some sell trades in. We've been, you know, scaling in a little bit with small trades. We're adding to some positions, watching this area, trying to take this down to our profit level. Uh, dollar, and now we're going to talk about ranges. So Aussie CAD, I'm short. Aussie dollar, I'm short. Euro Swiss, I'm long. Watch that break above 108.30. New Zealand CAD, I'm short. Those are my favorite position trades right now. Now let's get into some breakout trades. Okay, this is really important. I think if you pay attention to these, you will see some very big opportunities on some Japanese yen pairs. Watch the CAD yen. If we break above 79.90, now we've been toying with the idea of a breakout high or breakout lower. In fact, I had this adjusted a little bit because if we take this box down to that level, and up to this level where we had previously breakout levels, right? We see support, resistance, support, resistance. We had a false breakout. It went higher. We actually took a small buy trade and then it reversed on us. We took a sell trade and took it down for a nice profit. We had a sell trade down here at the break. We turned it into a buy trade because it took a small loss and took it into a buy trade. So we took small losses of like 30, 40 pips and wins for about 100 pips. Small loss, big win. We're still looking at the same level. All I'm doing now is I'm just going to stretch this box a little bit higher towards the close there and a little bit lower towards the close here. Now, I really think if you scroll out of this chart, look at where this pair has been before. The February and March highs all the way up towards 84.60 and the lows 73.75. Now, if we're trading right here in the middle, I do not think that this CAD yen is going to be stuck here. I think this CAD yen is going to break. And so if and when we break, I don't care what direction it is. If and when we break and we go to the highs, let's go. Deploy. Trade it like crazy. Be, I mean, I'm going to be pretty aggressive on this. Why? Because I think we can run all the way back up to these highs. Or the flip side of that is if we break down below, we go all the way back down towards the March lows. Either way, we're talking about three to 400 pips of opportunity on these breakouts. Now, the CAD yen is kind of my poster child for taking this range, which you can clearly see, and looking how that translates into other, other currency pairs. The dollar yen is doing something very similar. The dollar yen, the dollar's had a lot of volatility the last couple of weeks. We have this low at 104.20, which was kind of a false breakout below 105. I, I've been saying this for the la for really all of 2020. 105 is a really important support level. Now, we have this rebound where the bears refused or couldn't uh, close below 105. They responded. You know, the bulls jumped right in at that support level, pushed it all the way up towards 106.50. Now, I think that this dollar yen needs to break above or below. If we break above 106.50, I think we go to 109. Look left, there's a high. Look left, there's a high. I think we can drift up towards these highs around 110 to 111. If we break back down below 104, I think we're coming back into March lows, possibly even lower into 100. Again, we're looking at three to 500 pips to the upside and four to 500 pips to the downside if we can get outside of this box. So what am I going to do? Check my prices once a day, 5 p.m. Eastern time when the markets start the new daily candle. Did the previous day's close, be a, is it above it or is it below it? If it's neither, then I'm not trading it. So that's dollar yen. How about the euro yen? How about the pound yen? How about the, all these yen pairs are setting up for these great trades. Euro yen. I was looking for resistance. Okay, we are stretching into overbought conditions. We have some disagreement. 
Now, do we have an inner trend line break? It sure looks like we're getting some inner trend line break here. Okay, or very close to it. With a bit more confirmation, this looks really good. Now it might break and drift and drift and drift, but I think this was going to drop. If you're if you're a little bit uncertain about okay, if it just goes on the right side of the trend line, look at the CAD yen. Look at the dollar yen. If those yellow boxes break higher or lower, that's an easier trade. But my point is if it's the same direction, if CAD yen is breaking lower and dollar yen is breaking lower, I would not be surprised to see euro yen also going lower. So I'm essentially lining up a basket trade on the yen crosses. Okay, I think this is a great resistance point on the euro yen. I think you can look at the pound yen and see the same thing. We've had this really slow drift to the upside, almost as if we're trying to set this thing up for another big drop. So does the market with all these sideways candles on the pound yen stay sideways, 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 and then break to the downside? Does it drift up a little bit higher into this pocket here from February's break? Do we get to that pocket and then sell off? I'm looking for levels we can get some tight stops and then ride these profits down for a long, long ways. And we know that if the JPY is stronger, we're typically going to see a lot higher volatility. Okay, New Zealand yen is similar to that. New Zealand yen structure, we have resistance at these equal highs. Are we going to come back and retest that high and fail around 71.75 to sell it? Do we just break these lows from this slide in, in June? If we sell back to these levels and break lower, we can come all the way back down into some major lows from March. Okay, so yen pairs, what else? Uh, Swiss yen. This is safe haven versus safe haven, but are we going to see this pair continue to drift a little bit higher? Can we drift higher, 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 higher to the highs? I am bullish right now on the Swiss yen just for that trade. Just to get up towards 117, 117.50, I will turn this prof or turn this off for profits around 117.95. And from there, I'm only interested in selling it nice and high at 118. So I hope we can get to 117 to 118 first, take some profit, and then only look to sell it at that high. I think that uh, 118 level is a big opportunity on that pair. Is there a range in this one? No, but I'm just going to watch it because I think we can set up here for a big sell trade. Again, lining up for uh, Japanese yen strength. So that is, that's all of them, right? CAD yen, Swiss yen, Aussie yen, Aussie yen. I'll take a look at that one. Looks similar to the New Zealand yen. We had that really nice sell off in June and it's been drifting, fighting back, drifting, drifting. Doesn't want to, it refuses to drop, right? So we come back to retest the high. It just looks like it's setting up for a fall. Slow, 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 and then look. Lots of confirmation, looking for selling on the right side of that trend line. Do we come back to these levels? Do we go lower? It just sets up. So these are big alignments that I'm talking about. So the good thing is, is for, for the Japanese yen pairs, watch them once a day. 5 p.m., new daily candle. Is it closing above? Watch the CAD yen, watch the dollar yen. Those are going to be the cleanest ones. You know, the other ones, Aussie yen, if we break the trend line, sure, we can start participating on a smaller time frame. But CAD yen, dollar yen look great. Uh, don't be surprised to see those currency pairs starting to break out and having the whole basket move. So all Japanese yen pairs could be on the move. Position-wise, Aussie CAD, New Zealand CAD, Aussie dollar, Euro Swiss. Love those currency pairs. And then uh, we've got a lot of trading, of course, this week in the trading room. So that's it for me. Uh, again, take the time. Take a look at those videos that I have for my Keep It Seriously Simple video series. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Have fun. Let's have a good week. Talk to you all soon, everybody. Bye-bye.